All right. So this problem says a doctor allots 15 minutes for routine office visits and 45 minutes for full physicals. The doctor cannot do more than 10 physicals per day. The doctor has nine available hours for the appointments each day. A routine office um, visit costs $60 and a full physical um, costs $100. How many routine office visits and full physicals um, should the doctor schedule to maximize her income? What is her maximum income? So the thing is, um, looks like he does physicals and it looks like he does office visits, right? Looks like there's two unknowns. We don't know how many office visits or physicals he can do to maximize. So the first thing I'm automatically going to do is I'm going to create my variables. So I'm going to say x equals the number of office visits and y equals the number of physicals. Because those are the things I don't know how many he's doing. So whenever you're doing a word problem, after you read it, the best thing is to identify the variable. Variables. Um, so it says he allots 15 minutes of routine office visits and 45 minutes for full physicals. The doctor cannot do more than 10 physicals per day. The doctor has um, nine available hours for the appointments each day. A routine office, OK. Um, so what we need to do is he says he has nine hours, 9 times 40, um, 9 times 60 is going to be, why am I blank here? 540 minutes. So you can say that the total maximum, 15x, right, because it's 15 minutes per office visit, plus 45y, and I'm just making these up. And that equals, he has nine available hours, so it would be 450 minutes, right? Yes. OK. This has to be less than or equal to 450 minutes. 540. 9 times 6 is 540. Why did I say 40 and 50? You're right. Thank you. Does this make sense, though? He only, nine hours is 540 minutes, right? It's either that or you convert your minutes to fractions of an hour, which you could do that but then we have to deal with fractions. So 15 minutes for an office visit, 45 minutes for um, a physical has to be less than or equal to 540 minutes. That's as much time he has in the office. Now, we also know that the physicals, uh, he cannot do more than 10 physicals per day. So his physicals, y, has to be less than or equal to 10. He can't do more than 10. And Doctor is 15 minutes. He cannot do more than 10 physicals per day. Is there anything else going on? Well, yeah. And so the other thing is, you got to think about this. The other thing, can you have negative physicals or negative office visits? No. So we can also say that x has to be greater than or equal to 0, and y has to be greater than or equal to 0. And that was the one of the thing, guys, usually in your linear programming problems. Majority of the time, you should have your feasible region is going to be in the first quadrant. That's not always going to be the case. But majority of the time, our variables, we're looking only for those positive values. So now, the hard part is I need to go ahead and graph this. So the first thing I do is 15x plus 45y is less than or equal to 540. First thing I would do is see if I could divide out a 15 or at least a 5. Does 515 divided into 540? 15, 540, I should go in there. 36. 36. So if I divide everything out by 15, I have x plus 3y is less than or equal to 36. Then I can subtract an x. And I have 3y is less than or equal to negative x plus 36. Divide by 3, divide by 3. Remember, there's a 1 there. y is less than or equal to negative 1 third x plus 12. That's not that bad, right? This looked pretty crazy. But I factored out, I divided out a common number to simplify it. And I can graph that. That's OK. x, y. So I go up to 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 
And again, as we mentioned, you know, I'm going to try to do my graphing the best I can. My slope is down 1 over 3. 1, 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. So I'm going to go down 1 over 3. Down 1 over 3. Trying to graph the best I can. That's less than or equal to, so I know that's going down. Right? Then I know that y has to be less than or equal to 10. So I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Has to be less than, so that's going to be pointing down. Um, now, we know x has to be greater than or equal to 0. That's going to be going this way. And y has to be greater than or equal to 0. That's going this way. Now, the other graph, the other point on my line is all the way over here. Right? Now, I don't have enough graph. I, I don't like, how am I supposed to know what that is? Ladies and gentlemen, this point represents the x or the y intercept. Anybody know? Well, this is the x-axis. So when you have a line that crosses the x-axis, we call that the x-intercept. Now, what is important about the x-intercept? Do we know what the value of y is at the x-intercept? How high up or down are we on the x-axis? Zero. So I know that this is x comma 0. I don't know what the x value is, though. So what's nice about this, because you're getting somebody you know, you're asking as far as like identifying these, is it, could we still determine what the x-intercept is by plugging in 0 in for um, we could plug 0 in for y and then solve for x. So if I plug 0 in for y, and let's just write this as an equation, negative 1 third x plus 12. Well, when I go ahead and solve, I subtract 12. I have negative 12 equals negative 1 third x multiplied by negative 3 over 1, which is the reciprocal. What I get is 36 equals x. So therefore, in reality, without even graphing with the correct pacing, I can see that this point is 36 comma 0. Right? So my vertices here, let's see, I have 0, com or 0 comma 10. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 comma 10. And I have another vertice of 36 comma 0. So I have three vertices, because here's my feasible region. Does everybody see how that's my feasible region? Anybody have any questions on that? No. OK. So everybody follows me with this. I know the graphing was a little bit hard in creating the equation. But now we need to, well, what are we trying to maximize? Again, the problem says a routine office visit costs $60 and full physical costs $100. Do you guys understand how previously our constraints were dealing with time? Right? Now he's trying to maximize cost or how much money he brings in. He's trying to maximize income. So he gets $60 for an office, wait, $60 for office visit, and $100 for a physical. So we could say 60x plus 100y. So now we need to plug in each one of these and see, plug in each x and y and see which one's going to work. Right? Try to give us the maximum. Now, obviously, ladies and gentlemen, we know that if these both have 10 as y, but that 0 and that one 6, then this one obviously is, excuse me, is not a maximum, right? Would you guys agree with that? I don't even need to show my work for that. So let's do 60 times 6 plus 100 times 10. And then let's do 60 times 36 plus 100 times 0. Does anybody have the answer for the first one? 3,600 plus 1,000. So 1,360. And I have no idea what the other one is. Can somebody figure out? Somebody do 60 times 36, 60 times 36, and see what that is? It's uh, 2,160. And am I correct on that? 
1,360? Oh, yeah, wait, no? Huh? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so obviously you guys see which one maximizes? So the doctor, how many, um, so how many physicals should the doctor give? Zero, right? The doctors, forget about physicals. They should just knock out 36 office visits in a day. And they'll maximize their income, if they want to maximize their income, right? That could be pretty boring, though, doing, th and that's a lot, 36 physicals in one day, or 36 office visits, right? But if they wanted to maximize their income, that's what they would do. Yes? I know that this x-intercept is a vertice on my feasible region. I know that on an x-intercept, the y value is 0. So I went to that equation of the line, and I replaced y with 0, and I solved for x. So I subtracted 12 to the other side. I had negative 1 third x equals negative 12. To get rid of the negative 1 third being multiplied by x, I multiplied by the reciprocal. Negative 12 times negative 3 over 1 equals positive 36. Okay. All right. I got a question for you guys. 